We're diving deep into some fascinating research on the Black Schools model today. Yeah. We'll uncover how it revolutionized finance. Absolutely. Explore its applications beyond Wall Street. Looking forward to it. And grapple with the debates surrounding its accuracy. Should be interesting. Ready to go deep? Let's unravel the impact of this groundbreaking formula. Before we get into the nitty gritty, all right. let's make sure we're on the same page. Sure. The Black Schools model is all about options pricing. Right. Can you give us a quick recap on what options are and why pricing them accurately is such a big deal? Certainly. But. Options are financial contracts. Yep that give the buyer the right, right, but not the obligation to buy or sell a specific asset at a predetermined price within a set time frame. Mm. Think of it like a reservation. Okay. You can use it, but you don't have to. Makes sense. Accurately, pricing these options is crucial because it directly impacts the potential profit and risk right. for both buyers and sellers. Before Black Schools, this was largely guesswork, right. making it a risky endeavor. So before Black Skulls, the finance world was essentially playing a guessing game with options. Pretty much. It sounds like a recipe for disaster. It, it was certainly a less efficient and more volatile market. I can imagine. There were attempts to develop models. Okay. Like Samuelson's work. Right. But they didn't quite crack the code. Interesting. Enter Fisher Black, Myron Skulls, and Robert Merton. Okay. Their collaboration is a testament to how innovation can spark when diverse perspectives converge, yeah. Black and Scholes brought their finance expertise, right. while Merton contributed his academic rigor. It's interesting that they initially started with the capital asset pricing model. KAPM. KAPM, a well-established theory at the time. Yeah. What led them to move away from that? While TAPM was groundbreaking in its own right, mm -hmm. they found it inadequate for accurately pricing options. Mm -hmm. This highlights a key element of innovation the willingness to challenge existing paradigms. That makes sense. Their breakthrough came with Merton's introduction of a risk-neutral valuation method right. based on arbitrage. This arbitrage concept sounds intriguing. Mm -hmm. Can you break it down for us? Essentially, arbitrage involves exploiting price discrepancies okay. for the same asset in different markets right. to make a risk-free profit. Interesting. Imagine finding a rare book for a steal at a local market okay. and then selling it online for a significantly higher price. Right. That's arbitrage in action. So instead of trying to predict individual investors' risk appetites, which is incredibly complex, exact. they shifted their focus to eliminating risk through hedging, mimicking that risk-free profit scenario. Precisely. Okay. This paradigm shift was their aha moment. Interesting. It formed the foundation of the Black Skulls formula. What are the key components that feed into this formula? The Black Skulls formula takes into account okay. the current price of the underlying asset, mm -hmm. the option strike price, the time until expiration, the risk-free interest rate, Okay. And a crucial factor known as volatility, which measures how much the asset's price fluctuates. That's quite a few variables to juggle. It is. Can you give us a sense of how these elements work together without delving too deep into the mathematical weeds? Certainly. The mm. formula calculates a theoretical price for the option, right. assuming a perfectly hedged scenario right. where all risk is eliminated. Okay. The interplay of these components reflects how changes in one factor, like volatility or time to expiry, can impact the option's price. That makes sense. Yeah. But this assumption of perfect hedging and eliminating all risk uh, sounds a bit idealistic, doesn't it? You've hit on a crucial point. Okay. It leads us to some of the limitations of the Black Skulls model. Mm. The real world rarely conforms perfectly to theoretical models. Right. And that's where some of the criticisms of the Black Skulls model arise. Okay. Yeah. So what are these assumptions that don't always align with reality? For instance, the model assumes that volatility remains constant over time. Hmm. However, we know that market volatility can be incredibly dynamic influenced by a myriad of factors. That's right. Just look at how markets react to unexpected events like geopolitical shifts or economic downturns. Exactly. Volatility can spike dramatically, throwing those constant volatility assumptions out the window. What other assumptions are baked into the Black Skulls model that might not hold up under scrutiny? Another key assumption is that markets operate with perfect efficiency. Oh. This implies that all relevant information is instantly reflected in asset prices, leaving no room for arbitrage opportunities. Right. In reality, markets are complex systems with varying degrees of efficiency, yeah. creating situations where information dissemination isn't always instantaneous. And let's not forget transaction costs 
which the Black Scholes model conveniently ignores. Right. In the real world, trading involves brokerage fees, bid-ask spreads, and other costs that can eat into profits and impact pricing. Absolutely. These idealized assumptions are necessary to create a mathematically tractable model. Hmm. But they also highlight the potential divergence between theoretical predictions and actual market behavior. Given these limitations, it's surprising that the Black Skulls model is still widely used. Yeah, it's become a standard. One of the papers you shared discussed its applications in pricing warrants, which are similar to options but often attached to bonds or preferred stock. Right. Are those applications essentially using the same formula, but with adjustments for the specific terms of the warrant? That's correct. Okay. The fundamental principles of the Black Scholes model can be applied to various financial instruments with option-like features. Interesting. For instance, valuing warrants often involves adjusting for factors like the dilution effect of new shares being issued when the warrant is exercised. You mentioned earlier that even real estate investments can exhibit option-like characteristics. Definitely. Could you elaborate on that? Certainly imagine a real estate developer with an option to purchase a piece of land. The value of that option hinges on various factors, okay. including the land's potential future value if developed, the cost of development, and the time frame for exercising the option. So the land itself becomes the underlying asset, and the option to buy it acts like a call option in the stock market. Precisely. Fascinating. The Black Schools model can help evaluate the worth of such a land purchase option, considering the inherent uncertainties and flexibility involved in real estate development. The paper from the Journal of Innovation and Entrepreneurship highlighted an even more unexpected application using the Black Schools model to evaluate research and development projects. Yeah, that was a fascinating study. It used the example of a pharmaceutical company assessing the value of developing a new drug. Right. Factoring in the unknowns of clinical trials and regulatory approvals. Exactly. That seems like a pretty innovative way to apply a financial model. Indeed, R&D investments share similarities with options. They involve significant upfront investment with uncertain future returns. The decision to continue or abandon a project based on evolving information essentially represents an option. Okay. The Black Schools model can be adapted to assess the value of these R&D investments, treating them as a portfolio of options. It's amazing how a model initially designed for stock options can be applied to such diverse scenarios, from real estate development to cutting-edge pharmaceutical research. The paper also mentioned evaluating customer relationships through this lens, specifically long-term contracts or loyalty programs that provide customers with options for future purchases. Yes, these customer relationships can be viewed as creating a series of options for the customer. Interesting. And the Black Schools model can help companies assess the value of those relationships. It's a testament to the model's versatility and its ability to shed light on decision-making under uncertainty in a wide range of contexts. However, let's not forget the limitations of the Black Schools model that we discussed earlier. Right, of course. While these diverse applications are intriguing, we need to approach them with a healthy dose of skepticism. Three. The real world is messy and it rarely conforms perfectly to the model's assumptions. You're absolutely right. Blindly applying the model without acknowledging its potential shortcomings can lead to misleading valuations and flawed decision-making. Right. It's crucial to remember that it's a tool. Yeah. And like any tool, it needs to be used appropriately and with an understanding of its limitations. A Frontiers in Applied Mathematics and Statistics paper provided a compelling example of the model's potential inaccuracy. Oh, yeah, I remember that one. When it analyzed actual market data for call and put options on U.S. stocks. Interesting. They found that while the Black Schools model performed relatively well for pricing call options, mm -hmm. there were significant discrepancies when it came to put options. Mm -hmm. What might account for that difference? That's a great question, and it highlights the complexities of option pricing in practice. Okay. One possible explanation is that put options, which grant the holder the right to sell an asset, right. tend to be more sensitive to tail risks or the probability of extreme market movements. Mm. Since the Black Schools model relies on assumptions like constant volatility, right. it may not fully capture these tail risks leading to pricing inaccuracies for put options. That makes sense. The paper also highlighted the fact that the model tends to perform better in stable market conditions and struggles when volatility spikes or unexpected events occur. Yeah, definitely. It seems like the very assumptions that make the Black Schools model mathematically elegant mm -hmm. also limit its ability to accurately reflect the turbulent nature of real-world financial markets. 
Precisely this inherent tension between theoretical simplicity and practical applicability is a recurring theme in the world of financial modeling. Mm. While the Black School's model provided a groundbreaking framework, right. it also sparked a continuous quest for more robust and sophisticated models that can better handle the inherent complexities and uncertainties of financial markets. So while the Black School's model deserves recognition for revolutionizing option pricing? Absolutely, a foundational model. It's essential to view it as a stepping stone rather than a final destination. I agree. The quest for a perfect option pricing model continues. What are some of the approaches researchers are exploring to improve upon the Black School's framework? Researchers are constantly seeking to refine and enhance the model. Okay. One promising avenue is incorporating stochastic volatility, right, yeah. which allows for volatility to fluctuate over time instead of remaining constant. Right. This better reflects the dynamic nature of market volatility observed in real-world trading. That's a significant improvement as we discussed how the assumption of constant volatility can be a major weakness of the Black Scholes model. For sure. What other modifications are being explored? Another area of active research is incorporating jump diffusion processes into the model. Interesting. This allows for the possibility of sudden large jumps in asset prices, which the standard Black Schools model doesn't account for. Right. These jumps, often triggered by unexpected news or events, can significantly impact option pricing and incorporating them into the model can improve its accuracy. It seems like these refinements aim to make the model more robust and better equipped to handle the unpredictable nature of financial markets. Exact. Events like the 2008 financial crisis, which exposed the limitations of many traditional risk models. Yeah. Underscore the importance of this ongoing quest for more accurate and resilient models. Absolutely. Each refinement brings us closer to capturing the complexities of the financial world. Yeah. Leading to better risk management, more informed investment decisions, and ultimately a more stable and efficient financial system. It's fascinating how the field of option pricing continues to evolve, building upon the foundation laid by Black Scholes and Merton. It really is a testament to their work. Their work was a monumental achievement. Yeah, groundbreaking. But it also ignited a spirit of continuous innovation in the pursuit of a more complete understanding of risk and uncertainty in financial markets. It's a dynamic field, and that's what makes it so captivating. Mm. The interplay between theoretical models and real-world market behavior is a constant source of learning and discovery. Speaking of learning and discovery, there's one more fascinating concept we need to delve into. Yeah. One that highlights the intricate relationship between models and reality. Mm -hmm. The idea of a self-fulfilling prophecy in financial markets. Fascinating concept. We'll explore this intriguing concept and its implications for the Black Skulls model in our final segment. So we've been talking about the limitations of the Black Skulls model. Right. And how researchers are working to refine it. Mm. But there's this other layer of complexity. This idea of a self-fulfilling prophecy. Right. In the context of financial models. Exactly. Can you expand on that? This concept is crucial to understanding the interplay between models and reality oh. in financial markets. It suggests that the widespread adoption of a model can influence market behavior hmm. in a way that reinforces the model's assumptions. Interesting. Even if those assumptions aren't entirely accurate. So the model's predictions can, in a sense, become reality simply because people believe in them and act accordingly. Precisely. If enough market participants believe that volatility is constant. Right, because the model assumes it. Because the Black Skulls model assumes it to be so. Yeah, okay. Their trading decisions might create a self-stabilizing effect, mm. keeping volatility relatively stable for a period of time. That's a fascinating concept. Mm. It really highlights how models can shape perceptions and ultimately influence real world outcomes. But as we've discussed, reality has a way of throwing curveballs. Absolutely. And those assumptions can eventually break down. For sure, the 2008 financial crisis is a stark reminder oh, yeah. of how reliance on models that don't fully capture tail risks mm -hmm. or the potential for extreme market events can have disastrous consequences. Right. It underscores the importance of using models with a critical eye, understanding their limitations, and constantly seeking ways to improve them. I completely agree. The Journal of Innovation and Entrepreneurship paper we discussed earlier highlighted the dangers of blindly applying the Black Skulls model, mm. especially in situations where unexpected events or what they call contingent events, mm -hmm. can significantly impact an investment's value. Right. They specifically cautioned against relying solely on the model when an investment is heavily influenced by unpredictable events, when delaying decisions to gather more information is prudent, 
and when the investment allows for flexibility and adjustments along the way. That's sound advice. Yeah. The paper argues that in those situations, okay. a real options approach, mm. informed by the principles of the Black Skulls model, right. but adapted to accommodate real-world complexities, is more appropriate. It seems like the key takeaway here is to view models as tools Absolutely. that can provide valuable insights, but shouldn't dictate decisions without careful consideration of their limitations and the specific context of the investment. Precisely. Models can be powerful aids to decision making, but they should never replace critical thinking, sound judgment, and a thorough understanding of the underlying fundamentals right. of the investment or market being analyzed. So where does this leave us in our understanding of the Black Schools model and its legacy? The Black Schools model undoubtedly revolutionized finance. It did. Providing a groundbreaking framework for understanding and pricing options. Its impact extends far beyond stock options, right. influencing the valuation of various financial instruments and even finding applications in non-financial fields. Yeah, we talked about that. Like real estate R&D and customer relationship management. But as we've explored throughout this deep dive, yeah. It's not a perfect model. Well, Mo model is. Its reliance on certain assumptions, such as constant volatility and perfectly efficient markets, can lead to inaccuracies. Yeah. Particularly in volatile or unpredictable market conditions. For sure. However, the model's limitations have also served as a catalyst for innovation. Definitely. Driving researchers to develop more sophisticated models. Right. That incorporates stochastic volatility, jump diffusion processes, mm -hmm. and other refinements the better reflect the complexities of real-world financial markets. It's amazing how much progress has been made. It's a testament to the power of continuous learning and refinement. Absolutely. Black Skulls and Merton provided a foundational framework. They really did. But the quest for a more complete understanding of risk and uncertainty continues to push the boundaries of financial modeling. And that's what makes this field so dynamic and exciting. Each new discovery, each refinement to existing models brings us closer to a more nuanced and accurate understanding of financial markets, yeah. ultimately leading to better decision-making and a more robust financial system. It's been fascinating exploring the Black Skulls model. I agree. Its evolution and its enduring impact on the world of finance. Yeah. We've delved into its theoretical foundations, mm -hmm. its practical applications, its limitations, right. and the ongoing quest to refine and improve upon it. It's been a great discussion. I hope our listeners have gained a deeper appreciation for the complexities of option pricing. Me too. The importance of understanding the assumptions behind financial models. Absolutely crucial. And the dynamic interplay between theory and practice in the ever-evolving world of finance. Couldn't have said it better myself. As we wrap up this deep dive. Okay. Remember that the quest for knowledge is an ongoing journey. Keep asking questions, keep exploring, and never stop seeking a more profound understanding of the forces that shape financial markets and the tools we use to navigate them. Well said. Thank you for joining us on The Deep Dive.